welcome everyone. Hello, welcome, hi. So good to see you all. Returning faces, new faces, welcome. I'm Apostle Catherine. I'm the lead pastor of Fivefold Church. You are at Revival in the Park. Revival is now, amen. Amen. We have been amazed. God has amazed us with the wonders that he has done here at Revival in the Park. And those watching live, welcome everyone watching online. Many have received miracles as they watch live. People received the baptism of the Holy Spirit while watching live last week and were delivered and healed. So be expectant. Get ready to receive. Amen. And what about you here? If people are receiving miracles across the world on the live while watching, what about you here? Yeah. Be expectant. Amen. <laughs> God moves upon our hunger, upon our expectancy. It what, it's what pulls upon his heart. And he absolutely wants to touch you powerfully today, do miracles in your life today. Whatever it is you need, healing or deliverance, more of his spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, provision, doors to open, whatever, that, whatever it is, it's God's will for you to have those things. And the God of power is here today, ready to give them to you. Last week, God amazed us with what he did. Several were baptized in the Holy Spirit right here, began speaking in tongues, and they were overcome and overwhelmed by the power and love of Jesus. Some of them are here right now. I want to invite um, first Rohan. There is so much power in our testimony. There is so much power in our testimony. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So something spiritual happens when you release what God has done in your life. A spiritual deposit of faith is released to others so that now they are able to receive from God what they couldn't before because they did not have faith to receive it. So this is the power of testimonies. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing, Rohan. Share what God did. Revival is now, and I just thank you, Apostle, for equipping us. My life was completely changed last Sunday, for sure. I mean, it's, you know, the Holy Spirit just takes over. When you surrender your lips, I mean, you start speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, that's something I never knew how to do. You have to first surrender yourself to the Lord, and you have to have that childlike faith so he can come in and enter. I mean, last Sunday, you know, I was on the, you know, bending my knees, and uh, Apostle Catherine, you know, obviously baptized me in the Holy Spirit and many others. I was delivered. I was healed. Healed. I had the fire of the Holy Spirit all at me all at once. I had a sciatica nerve pain for about 10 years and didn't really have any medical way of just healing it. Last Sunday, I mean, the, the Monday, the day after, I started running and I didn't feel no pain. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, that's just a testimony of uh, you know, miracle signs and wonders. What Apostle talks about, it's, it's, it's the real deal. There's nothing like the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the greatest gift you can ever have. And he can do things no other medicine, no other doctor can do. And so I just you know, want to thank you for equipping us and giving us that spiritual wisdom, discernment, and uh, you know, leading by example. So thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. For Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Delivered. We saw God deliver him right here. And then healed of 10 years of pain. So God will, do, you came for one miracle, God will do more. <laughs> Amen. This is the love of Jesus. I know there's more of you here who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, and it was so powerful. We have videos online in, um, of what happened. And, I mean, I was there in person. I watched it again and again, and, and still watching it for the 20th time I'm just full of fire and love for Jesus just watching him at work amen so if you didn't see it if you don't follow us on social media follow us so you can see those videos and truly be touched by God as you watch I mean there's no way your faith cannot increase when you see God visibly touching his children amen and even you know, there were people online watching the live who, who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit while watching as well. Hallelujah. So we praise, we praise you, Jesus, for what you just praise God right now for what he has done. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So Proverbs 8, 21. 
it says the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. Do you know it's God's will for you to be bold? It is God's will for you to be bold. It's his commission, instruction for you to be bold. There are times when you need to be bold for him. We see Jesus. He was bold. I mean, look at his life. He was showing up to the temples all the time, learning from the Jewish teachers, the religious leaders, the Pharisees. You know, he was learning from them. He was asking them questions. And then one day he comes and he goes against their law. He starts doing things against their law. That is bold. Amen. That that is bold. We see we see in Luke 13:10 on a Sabbath Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there she had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years she was bent over could not straighten up at all when Jesus saw her he called her forward and said to her woman you are set free from your infirmity then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath because that went against the laws the Jewish laws The synagogue leader said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites. Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. So the Jewish people are like, you have six days to heal. The law says this. Jesus, why are you doing this? This is not cool. They're probably thinking this is confusing our followers. We instruct our followers. This is the law. You don't do, and you're, you're pulling the people away. You're, you're confused. What's wrong with you, Jesus? Like, this is, their, this is their thinking. These religious people who they looked, who people looked up to. And Jesus responds with such boldness, so sharply. You hypocrites. This is how he responds. You hypocrites. Now, some people could look at this and be confused. That doesn't sound very loving-like. Right? Right? But what was happening was Jesus was convicted of what God had called him to do. He was convicted that he must follow the Holy Spirit and not these religious people, these religious know-it-alls. Amen? He was convicted. When I see someone sick, they need to be healed now. Forget the law. This is my new way. I'm following the Holy Spirit now. This is how we do things now. I'm following the Holy Spirit. So when someone's sick, I will heal them. That is what matters. They need to be rescued. That's what I see. Not the feelings of the Pharisees. Amen? When someone... Is, has oppression. I want to free them. I don't care about anything else. God has led me to do this for them. This is what matters the most. So he comes so strongly with this, like you hypocrites, he comes strongly with this because the work of God is so important. We need to understand what love is. What God's love for people is. God's love for people is not the same as people pleasing. It's not the same. And many people get it confused. Because they think that they need to, they don't want to offend anybody. 
rub anybody the wrong way. So, so people thinking that way could see Jesus speaking so sharply like this and be like, Jesus, why couldn't you wait till after service? Why couldn't you take the woman in quiet and say, hey, you know, the Jewish people, they won't understand. I don't want them to be offended. I don't want to hurt their feelings. So I'm just going to do this quietly so I can please the people too. Please people and please God. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work because he's in the synagogue and God's calling him to heal someone right there because the wonders of God are to be displayed for people to see. Number one. Number two. We should not be led by people, whether we can heal or not, preach the gospel or not. We should be led by God. Hallelujah. So, Jesus had this conviction that the work of God is so important. God wants you to know this. His work is so important to him. His work. The spreading of the gospel, preaching the word that changes people. Setting people free of so much oppression in their life. He, being healed. This is what's so important more than anything else. Amen? People will not understand when you are really walking in God's calling not everyone will understand what you're doing. Not everyone will understand. When God called me to be an apostle, so much of my family and my friends did not understand. I was a Christian music, uh, Christian music singer, songwriter before. That's what I was pursuing. And I was getting so much applause, so much validation from people, my friends and my family. And I had so much Christian friends and family so much support. And then one day, I encountered the power of God for the first time. I witnessed miracles happening, people being healed, people being set free. I was then baptized in the Holy Spirit, began speaking in tongues. I did not know that was for believers today until that, about that moment. And it set me on fire like never before. It changed my life completely. I surrendered to God in that moment. And nine months later, I went to a conference, and a prophet prophesied to me, you're called to be an apostle. And I did not want that. Public speaking was my biggest fear, my biggest weakness. But I wanted to obey God more than what I wanted, my will. So I said yes. Beautiful. And I obeyed God's call. And that's how I am here today. But I want to tell you that once I encountered the power of God, first of all. Many people did not understand. Many people thought it was weird. Many Christian people in my life did not understand, thought it was weird, thought it was strange. Once I stepped into my calling as an apostle, all of that support went away. So many people didn't get it. So much of my Christian family and friends who were supporting me before who were so excited about what I was doing, quiet, to this day, to this day. You cannot please people and God. If you are, you are not pleasing God. It's important you know this. Because when you really are walking in God's will, where his power is, doing his work, people will not like it. People will not like it. People will speak against it. People will call you names. People will think you're weird. People can call you false prophet. The enemy is terrified of the true work of God of the power of God moving. The enemy is terrified. So you've got to understand, you know, last week we learned about how 
I taught about how when you are, are at the place of where God's power is flowing, anointing's flowing, the devil hates this so much because this is the place where you will be set free. Like Rohan shared, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, set on fire, healed and delivered all in one moment. Devil's not happy about that. He doesn't want that to happen. And on top of that, this is where you will be equipped and impartation will flow to you. Anointing will flow to you so you can walk in the power of God. We learned about this last Sunday. If you didn't see the message, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. But today, God wants you to understand the devil hates the work of God. Once you, it's, a, it's a struggle getting here, and it's a struggle staying here. But it's also a fight for me to be doing this right now. I had to fight. I had to co-labor with Jesus for what happened last Sunday for it to happen, you know? I had to fight so much warfare for the anointing to grow in me. We don't just come here and boom, it's easy. It's not easy because the devil hates what is happening, where the power of God is moving. The first time that we had people fly across the country from the East Coast, you know, we used to have church in a building, but then COVID hit, so we moved out here. And you can't reserve this space. It's first come, first serve, because it's COVID times and things are different, right? So we come here, and it's not always simple. Sometimes there's, it's a struggle to have church. You know, you put so much effort, so much, so much heart and effort into getting here. And then when you get here, it, the, the fight doesn't end. <laughs> because the devil does not want freedom to come here. But Jesus has the victory. Amen? He has the victory when we stand strong when we persevere, when we choose to be bold. But when that first, uh, uh, the first people flew, uh, f- flew from the country, we've had several people fly across the country to come encounter the power of God here. And the first time the people flew, there was this huge event going on right here, huge, like 60 plus people, and all, all in the space. And the event ended, but they were still wanting to congregate and they didn't really understand, you know, the importance of the work of God, you know, so they weren't like really moving over. Eventually we were able to have this space, but the socializing and loud music continued and they were standing like right here, a big mass of people. And so I just preached louder and I said, people come here. You know, I knew the devil did not want these people to receive, the ones who had flown and everyone who was there. And that's why he was trying so hard. But God is a spirit. He still moves despite the, the, whatever you see going on, the obstacles of this world. Despite the distractions, if we as vessels can, can be strong and keep the faith, fight the good fight of faith, can understand what's going on in the spiritual realm and not let the devil get to you. Not let the devil distract you and be stubborn in the spirit. They will receive freedom. They will receive healing. They will receive what God wants to give them today. No matter what's happening, God is a spirit and he is not confined to loud music, for example. He's not confined to dogs running by. <laughs> He's a spirit who, who moves however he wants. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that day, God set free those people who traveled. We saw a demon speak out of the the woman, and she was set free by the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you could see that the enemy knew what would happen when they came here. Hallelujah. So you need to be aware how powerful the work of God is. Because the enemy will try. But you have to be strong and be bold like Jesus. 
I know these people hate me and they're going to be so offended. But I have this conviction that the work of God must go forward no matter what. I will heal this person who is sick. This is the love of God. It's not making the Pharisees happy. It's not making people who don't understand happy. There will be many people that don't understand. There will be atheists, obviously, that don't understand. I get a whole bunch of comments on these lives, you know, making fun, posting videos of me making fun. <laughs> you know, there will be atheists that don't understand and make fun of you, mock you. There will also be the Pharisee type people who were very much like the Pharisees where they were blinded so much spiritually that they couldn't recognize really Jesus. And they called Jesus demon possessed using demonic powers. When you are involved with the work of God, when you're doing the work of God, you will face those people. You will. You won't if you stay in the religious crowd and don't do the real work of God where his power is moving. But you will when you, when you come do the work of God. There will also be people who have good hearts, are not like Pharisees, but they still they have spiritual blindness in some areas. And all of a sudden they could attack you and come against you because something that you are doing that is God, their eyes haven't opened yet. So they don't understand. They don't understand. For example, when I was, um, before I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I was about to go to church. I was excited. And at this church, people were praying in tongues. And both of my roommates randomly said to me, you know, I don't think, you know, the Bible says that you shouldn't pray in tongues in a group, that um, there needs to be an interpreter. They were misinterpreting scripture. There's a, there's a scripture that says when you are speaking in tongues that there should be an interpreter. And the meaning of that is if someone is coming with this gift of tongues to, to, to release this message from the Lord that's coming through the tongues, it should not just stay like that, but there should also be an interpreter that can say, this is what God just said so that everyone here could be edified and could actually, re actually receive the word from God. Amen. And so it's not talking about, we can only pray in tongues only, only in private. No, no. Praying in the spirit is communicating to God directly. It's a form of worship and praying to him. So like when we are worshiping God, like we just were, it's us worshiping God directly, you and him. We are all together worshiping him. It's intimacy. We're looking at him. We're focusing on him. And so this is an appropriate time for you to pray and sing however you want. With understanding and in spirit. Okay? So my, my well-meaning roommates were good people, good Christians, but they were spiritually blind in this one area. And so it was kind of this like attack on me. And I, and I know in my heart, I'm like, I think what they're saying is not true. I know, I, I feel that this is right and this is God, how the people were praying in tongues together. I was convicted. This is the Holy Spirit, you know? And so I got in the car. I was driving to the service that day, and I was thinking to myself, I was praying, you know, God, I want to learn more the, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't know much about it. And I want to receive it. And would you know that that day when I showed up there, the, the minister pre was teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he said, those of you who haven't received yet, come forward. You will receive today. And that is when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But you see, that kind of like attack coming at me from like other Christians never happened until I was really doing the work of God, being involved with the work of God, the power of God. So you have to understand that there's going to be all different types of people that won't get you, that won't understand you when you are bold for Jesus. You need to understand so you can be prepared. All that matters is God's will. 
not people's will. God's will is what matters. Galatians 1.10 says, am, uh, it says, am I now, Apostle Paul is saying, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So there it's clear. You cannot please people and be a servant of Christ. You cannot. Something that will keep you strong in this, God wants to equip you so you can be strong because I'm telling you that so many eyes have not opened up and I was a Christian my whole life and it took me until I was in my mid-20s until, and I was an open, open. I was not a skeptical person. I was open. But it took until then for my eyes to open up that God moves in power today, that he heals people, that he casts out demons, that, pe- that baptism in the Holy Spirit exists. It took me that long. And I was open. I was seeking God. Okay? So you need to understand that there are so many who won't understand. Do not let that get you down. But you need to stay in your conviction of what God has spoken to you, of what, he, of what he's revealed to you. The encounters, the experiences you have had with God, other people have not. When you have an encounter with God, you need to value it and treasure it. When God convicts you of something, speak something to you, to your spirit. When he speaks something to you, like today, right now, for example, and you're like, I just heard from God today. You need to understand that many other people in your life did not have that encounter that you had. So they won't get it. But you'd have to hold on to what God spoke to you. That is what matters. And you have to take the intention of reminding yourself of it. God's not going to just come in an audible voice. Hey, remember? Hey, remember what I told you? You have to take the intention. In Acts 4, in Acts 4, we see how bold the apostles were, how bold all of the people of God were in the Acts church. Oh, we see their boldness. They had so much opposition. Now, the Bible talks about in Acts 4 how two of the apostles, um, Peter and John, they, uh, the Sadducees were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people. And they then healed somebody. They healed a man. And it infuriated them out of jealousy, these, these Sadducees, these religious people. So they got them arrested. Then they had a trial. And Peter and John they, they, they spoke boldly in the trial. They spoke boldly. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it gives you this supernatural fire and boldness. You are filled. God takes over. It's not like, oh, Holy Spirit, lead me. It's a fight between my flesh and spirit. But when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are filled. And God is taking over. So when you will obey him, he takes over and gives you supernatural boldness and courage. So it says, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, verse 8, Acts 4, verse 8. Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to, to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, and this man stands before you healed. Um, verse 13, it says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John, the boldness, and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. So Peter and John end up being released from prison, And these Sadducees, because they were jealous of them and they didn't want, they didn't want them to have more followers, they they commanded them, do not speak about Jesus. 
You cannot preach about Jesus. Now, Peter and John went back to the, to the believers, and they told them of what happened. And the believers are rejoicing. They are rejoicing. They are rejoicing that they were victorious, that God backed them up and set them free out of the, out, from being in prison. And do you know what's so powerful is that even though these religious people said, you cannot speak about Jesus, do you know the response of the believers? This is, what the, this is the response of the believers. It says, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people, reported all that had happened. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant. Why did the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? Um, and, then it, and then it says, Verse 28, verse 29. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So I want you to put yourself in their shoes. Imagine that me and other leaders here were, were taken to jail and they, were, they, were, they said the government here said, you cannot speak about Jesus or you're going to jail, all of you. Imagine how you would feel. The, their response that they did not try to compromise, they didn't try to please the government, they didn't get religious and think, well, we have to obey the government. But they had this conviction that there will be times where you cannot obey God and man. Amen? They had this conviction. So it was deep in them. They knew how important the work of God was. The preaching of the gospel, the healing of the sick, the casting out of the demons. The, the making of the disciples. They knew how important that was, and that could never stop. So therefore, they didn't try to compromise. They didn't try to brainstorm. Okay, like, let's figure this out. You know, I mean, government said this, so we, we need to please them. Okay, so maybe we'll just try to keep a hush-hush. We'll do this secretive spreading of the gospel. You know, we'll invite people over and we'll share in little groups. You, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? They didn't try to please people and God. But when it came to people trying to stop the work of God, they knew that no ifs, ands, or buts, the work of God must go forth. This is how important the work of God is. So what did they do? Oh, Lord, I believe in you. I believe in you. I know how important your work is. So I know you will do a miracle. I know you'll do a miracle. And we will be able to keep preaching the gospel no matter what. This is what they pray with faith, united. They are all having this bold faith and commitment to the work of God. And so when they did this, it says after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. So it literally moved. God moved it supernaturally, like an earthquake. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Hallelujah. This is our example for today. This is our example. Matthew 12, 46. Jesus was talking to the crowd, it says. Jesus was ministering to people, like here, like I am now. Jesus was ministering to a group of people, and listen to this. It says, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. That would be like if they were, like even, even like someone trying to talk right now, try, coming up, trying to interrupt the work of God happening, because every word Jesus is speaking is life. Every word of God is life coming at you. Amen? 
So it would be like a couple people trying to stop me speaking, stop this work of God here so that they could have a conversation with me, right? That's what was going on. His mother and brother came and they say, someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and brothers, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. I share this this passage with you for you to understand the love of God. Because some people can read that and think that doesn't sound loving. (laughs) Right? I mean, if you're trying to people, if you're thinking that people pleasing and making everybody comfortable and happy is, is loving all the time, right? You could see that and say, that's your mother and your brother. And you say, you're my mother and brother. That sounds like mean, right? <laughs> I mean, but the meaning of this, the, the, why this is in the Bible, why this is so powerful, is it's showing that Jesus was sent here to do the work of God. This is what's most important. Not making people feel good. Not pleasing people. Not making people feel comfortable. To do God's work is what's most important. And this is what was happening here. They were, they were missing revelation of like, hey, I know you're, you're VIP with Jesus, but you got to wait till after service is over because this is an amazing, powerful work that's happening. Miracles are happening as Jesus is standing there. You can't just pull him away from that. And people are missing out from receiving from God. This is how serious the work of God is. Hallelujah. And you have to understand that the enemy will try to attack the work of God and it doesn't always look like people with demon horns like I'm evil I'm from the devil stop the work of God here you know what I'm saying <laughs> like you have to be aware there will be nice people like the mother of Jesus they're nice good people the enemy comes tricky so that will stop Oh, well, that's my mother. I got to, that's my mother. I I mean, I got to be loving to her. You know, the enemy tries to confuse us with religion. So we have to be wiser than that, wise as a serpent, to discern, to be aware that the work of God is so important that the enemy will try to stop it at all costs. He will try to stop it short at all costs. We saw last week how the Holy Spirit started moving more powerfully than ever like two and a half hours into the service. I mean, it wasn't my plan to go that long, but it was God's plan. I mean, people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then God started delivering Rohan. We saw God delivering Rohan, Rohan, and everyone else here was just started spraying in tongues like really loud and like, yelling out to God. I mean, you could visibly see God was coming more and more and more. I can't control that. I don't want to control that. I want God to be in control completely. Amen? So if that means that we have to go a little bit longer or a lot longer, I don't I don't know. I just want God to lead. Amen? I just want God to have his way. Hallelujah. Even um, we see we see so many people were being brought. This so many sick and demon possessed were being brought to the church where Jesus was ministering, and then also in the Acts church, so many were were being brought. That probably wasn't a forty five minute service, you know, but that's okay, right? Because this is revival. <laughs> this isn't normal, like, church time that we're used to. But this is revival. This is the Holy Spirit moving and touching millions of people. Not just one or two. No, God, touch them all. God, do all sorts of miracles. 
Amen. You know, maybe you look at me, I'm here preaching in a public park and casting out demons in a public park. You might say, whoa, you're bold. Where'd you get that boldness? I was not born with this, let me tell you what. If you can believe it, in middle school, I was the shyest person in my class. I thought I was gonna be voted most shy, most quiet for the senior year superlatives, literally. I didn't know how to interact with people. I didn't know. I didn't miss, so I was lacking social skills in that area. I was nervous, scared, um, and, and, and God did a work in me. And, 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 and then when I went on to college, uh, I, I, there was classes where I would have to make a presentation and speak in front of only 10 people, and I would be paralyzed. I would go brain dead. I could, not, I could not comfortably speak in front of people. It was my biggest fear, my biggest weakness. This is the absolute truth, I promise you. Okay. So how did I get here now from there? So this is how I, I got here. Um, as I shared earlier, I encountered the power of God for the first time. I witnessed demons being cast out of people. And it opened up my eyes to the love of God and his power like never before. It made my eyes open up to, wow, Jesus really does want to free his people of every kind of affliction. He really does. I just saw it. I just saw it. And it opened up my eyes that he wanted to do this for all of his people. Now this is his love. I received prophetic ministry. A, a, a servant of God spoke a prophetic word to my life for the first time. And it made me fall in love with Jesus. It made me see that he was really with me. It made me see his love for me like never before. It removed all of the lies of religion I had. Just that one encounter. I then was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was a servant of God who placed his hand on my head and I started speaking in tongues. And in that moment right there, I surrendered to God completely. My faith went from like 20% to like 1,000. I was on fire for God. I wanted to be on fire for him my whole life. I wanted to be surrendered, but I couldn't. I my eyes weren't open. I didn't really know his love. But because I went to the place where the work of God was taking place, because servants of God in my life chose to be bold so that God could move through them and touch me, I was set on fire for Jesus now. I was surrendered to him now. I was in love with him now. I knew his love for me. Other servants of, servants of God would preach the word and it would deliver me from religious lies of the devil, all this condemnation and shame and guilt that I would carry in my life. It was removed because of the power of God through the preaching of the gospel. The work of God, the work of God is what changed my life. I stand here today completely free, living an abundant life in every area, so in love with Jesus. I used to, I used to not know God's love and, 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 and so badly want to know his love and so badly want to have a good relationship with him. And now I'm at a place where I'm in love with Jesus and I have a strong faith now that I once yearned for. I'm walking in my calling. I know exactly I'm walking in the calling that God, why God put me on this earth. I'm doing it. I have so much peace. I have so much joy that I didn't know was possible. I have found abundant life in every area because of the power of God that has touched me. The power of God that came through other servants of God. 
all of these things, all of these eyes opening, all of these encounters, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the prophetic word, the teaching that delivered me from lies, it all came from God working through vessels. So that is where my boldness comes from because I want what I have received for you, for every person on this world, in this world. I love Jesus so much. I want to please him and touch his heart. I want to be obedient to him. His love is so amazing that I want to only please him. And the only way to please him is to obey him. I know that when I'm standing here being bold, preaching in a public park and casting out demons, I know I'm pleasing him. And that is what's given me this peace and joy like I can't describe is knowing that I'm touching God's heart. Is knowing that I'm in his will. Is knowing that I can kind of thank him a little bit through this because what he's given me, it's like how can I thank him enough? So dealing with spiritual warfare, dealing with haters is worth it. Because I can't thank Jesus enough. This is the only way to really thank him is what I'm doing, is being bold for him, is serving him. So when haters come, when it's so difficult, it's such a struggle just to even have church here, when people come and never return again, when people abandon, I push all of that aside. And I think about Jesus. I think about his love for his people. I think about his love for his people. I think about the people out there who really do want to receive from him but are waiting to have those same encounters that I had had. I focus on those people. I focus on you. I don't know your, the faces, the names of these people, but I know they're out there. I know there are people out there like me who are waiting for, for God to move through me. Like how God moved through those other servants of God in my life. I keep my focus there. I keep my focus there. This is where the boldness comes from. I keep my focus there. I keep my focus on what Jesus wants only. I keep my focus on his people, on his heart for his people. I remind myself of this truth. The only way God can reach his people is through me, is through you, is through vessels. This is the way that God designed it. God made it this way that he works through us vessels that's the se- that's the secret to the boldness you have to be bold for god to please him and this is the secret right here just have a heart to please god if you want to know what touches god's heart the most It's for you to be used by him, which looks like being very bold and standing strong in a lot of persecution and a lot of hate and a lot of people not understanding. Way more of that than encouragement. Way more of that than support. Way more of that than thank yous. But none of that matters. It's not about the praise. It's not about the thank yous from people. It's about what does God want? What does God want? Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Romans 1.16, this is another version. I refuse to be ashamed of the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. For I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved. I'm thrilled. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of any of the wonders of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ includes all of who Jesus is. Jesus the healer. Jesus the deliverer. Jesus the baptizer in fire. Jesus who moves in the Holy Spirit and does whatever he wants. Makes people to even look drunk like on the day of Pentecost. I am not ashamed of this Jesus. I am not ashamed. You know, I am so proud of God's wonders. I'm so excited. God has done wonders here, casting out demons. I have testimonies I, I want to share with you. There were te- there's testimonies that people just sent me this past to uh, these past this past morning. Listen to this. Someone wrote that just this morning. I've been delivered from two extremely powerful family like bloodline curses, like generational curses. Um, and they said I could not have done it without your help. You've changed my life and my entire family online forever with the power of Christ. I didn't know I could do it until I witnessed demons being cast out on your channel. Hallelujah. Um, and, then, and then someone else wrote, after watching, this is on one of the deliverances that took place right here, where a demon was cast out. Someone wrote, after watching your deliverance videos, my eyes started to open about the spiritual war of what's going on. And praise God for this, because after watching the videos, my struggle about this specific sin has been done. Praise Jesus for freeing me. So, wonders are done here by God, and we put them online. We put them everywhere online. Why? So this can happen. So God can touch people. (sighs) So people can see the wonders of God. Hallelujah. Um, Paul says, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. I don't want to just stand here and talk about Jesus so that you will believe. I want you to see Jesus at work. So your faith can be real. So God can be real to you. That's what the power of God does. That's what the demonstration of the power of God does. Is it makes God so real to you. I can preach here with such confidence and passion and assurance because God is so real to me. Amen. What he's spoken is so real to me. I could not do this before I encountered the power of God. So, we need to think like Jesus and be proud of his works. There have been people here who, there's one woman one time, she had been praying or she, no, no, she's been Googling churches that morning because she heard God calling her to come back to him. She went away from him. She was Googling churches that morning. She came to the park with her kids. She saw us here. She came here. She encountered the power of God. She was weeping as God released a prophetic word to her. There was another gentleman who was working out in the park, had, was shirtless, and he comes and sits right here because he sees us. God touched him so much through a prophetic word, he started weeping here as well. Okay, so... To be here is a blessing. We need to see rightly that 
the answer to everyone's problems in this park right now is right here. The words that are released, the power that is released, Jesus is the answer. So we need to be here like praying, interceding. Oh Lord, let them come. Oh Lord, let them come. This is the answer. Every person here, every person who wants to have an event here before or after, oh, let, this is a blessing to them. Let them receive God. Hallelujah, hallelujah that people want to have events before and after us that they may be able to receive from God. There is someone who is having an event after us. Um, and a few weeks ago, a demon was cast out of a woman. And she was standing right here with several other people. And they don't believe in Jesus. They hadn't believed in Jesus. And they were standing right here. They were doing like a, like a new age or yoga thing afterwards. Um, so they were standing right here. And I was casting out the demon right here. Right here. Like three feet away from them. She comes back the next week. She says, you know, it's a blessing to be here before our event starts. Like it's, it's been really a blessing to, to witness this. And you know what? Um... I like saw a, a demon like at night. I just like saw like a vision of a demon and that never happened before. And I said, go in the name of Jesus. And it left. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 So um, that happened because of what she, she witnessed, the power of God moving here, you know? So uh, to be here, Wow. We need to have this, this mind like, this is the answer. This is a blessing to be here. It's not to be, we should not think like, oh, it's embarrassing. Demons cast out. People won't understand. We shouldn't think, oh, it's embarrassing. You know, bapt baptism of the Holy Spirit. People won't get it. You know, they were not ashamed. They, they, on the day of Pentecost, they poured out on the streets. And, and, and it became a sign to the people that God is real because they started speaking in different tongues of different languages. And the Bible says that people heard their native tongue. And what was coming through the tongues of people who were just baptized in the Holy Spirit was they were declaring the wonders of God in their native tongue. So the people all of a sudden believe because of this miracle of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in public. In public. And they were declaring the wonders of God. So every wonder that God does here is not for us to keep to ourselves. Just for our faith to be strengthened because we witnessed this. Because we had this encounter with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because we were delivered. Now just my faith can be increased. No! Every wonder is to be shared to the world so people can know Jesus is real so people's faith can be increased there have been so many testimonies people have shared with me of my faith is so increased now because of the videos I see of the miracles of the deliverances happening of demons being cast out there's people who commented on the demons being cast out videos that have 15 million views now on TikTok hallelujah some, some of the comments say I believe in God now some of the comments say, I, I received deliverance while watching. I felt something leave me while watching. Wow. Hallelujah. There have been several people, even last week, someone flew from New Jersey to receive deliverance because of seeing the wonder of, wonders of God, of demons being cast out. Hallelujah. So when God does a wonder in your life, when he does a wonder here in somebody else's life, it's for us to spread, 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 spread everywhere. This is what God did. This is what God did. Because that's how people will believe. That's how faith will increase. That's how people re will receive miracles. The testimony of Jesus, of the work of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. Psalm, Psalm 105, 1 says, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Among the nations. Put videos out so the nations can see it. Amen? Sing to him. Praise to him. Tell of all of his wonderful acts. Hallelujah. So, will you be bold for Jesus? 
Will you be bold for him? Amen. He's calling you to be bold for him. You know, it took boldness. It takes boldness to be out here. It takes boldness to put out videos knowing you'll get hate and people make fun of you and people make fun of you with the videos. It takes boldness. But it is worth it because this is what pleases God. This is how people are being saved, how they are receiving miracles. This is how revival is spreading. God wants to spread this revival across the whole world, reach so many people. But he needs you. He needs you. Do you want to be used by God? What he's asking you to do is very simple. And this will always be your mandate. And it's really the biggest thing. If you want to know your purpose in life, this is the biggest thing. Share his wonders. Tell about his works. Tell about what he's done in your life, in other people's lives. At Fivefold Church, at Revival in the Park. Tell, tell, spread, spread. Share videos. Have you heard of what God is doing? Have you seen what God has done? Don't be ashamed of him, of, of the real him. Don't be ashamed of his works. Don't be ashamed of his miracles. It's him. The miracles are him. Amen. This is what God is calling you to. As you do this, you will be amazed at how God uses you and brings people across the world to receive because you have spread the word and shared to others. This is what will happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, God, for these people that you have put here today. I know you've called them here to be in this revival, to be carriers of this revival. Not everyone has the privilege of being called first. It takes extra boldness and extra courage. But God has called you here to be among the first, to be used by him to bring in the harvest. It's simple. Share about what he is doing. Share about his wonders. Share about his work. Thank you, Jesus. God is going to begin to touch you now and release his spirit to you, his fire to you, and do miracles right now. As you come to receive miracles, if you come to receive miracles, God is going to begin to release to you now miracles to you in Jesus' name. Lift your hands to God right now as he begins to touch you and move. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, God, for the wonders you're about to do that will touch the world and proclaim your glory and your goodness. Jesus, we are proud of you. We are not ashamed of you. We are proud of you and we love you so much, Jesus, every single part of you. We love your work. We will be strong in your work, God. Thank you, Jesus. Just say to God right now, I will be used by you, God. I will be a vessel of you. I will not be ashamed of you. I will stand strong. I will be bold. I will obey you over men. I will please you, not men. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I speak the power of God to release a fire and boldness and strength in you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. May this fire and boldness increase now in Jesus' name. I speak for discernment and wisdom to increase now in Jesus' name. No more confusion no more confusion in Jesus' name. No more confusion from religious spirits in Jesus' name. All gone now in Jesus' name. 
May this heart for the work of God, may this heart for Jesus' heart, to want Jesus' heart, to want Jesus' what pleases Jesus, may this heart come in you now in Jesus' name. Increase in you in your heart now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to all spirit of oppression to leave you now in Jesus' name. Every person who is oppressed by demonic powers, I declare it to go in Jesus' name. All addictions here, all spirit of addiction, addiction to substances, to pornography, to sex, go now in Jesus' name. Be free now in Jesus' name. I speak all suicidal thoughts to leave now in Jesus' name. Spirit of depression, go. Anxiety, leave in Jesus' name. Panic attacks, stop now in Jesus' name. Night terrors, recurring demonic dreams, I declare them to leave now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I declare generational curses to be broken off of your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I speak spirit of poverty to go in Jesus' name. I speak you to have abundance in your life. You will have more than enough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to every sickness. Go from every body now in Jesus' name. Be free. Be healed now. All pain in every body. Pain, go. Be healed now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.